Do you need water filtration to fix that? Nasty city water for your family? Not sure where to start? Want some advice from the pros? Check this out. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Today, I'm joined by Heidi, and she's gonna help me share with you what you should be looking for when investing in a water filtration system to fix the city water for your family. By the end of this video, you'll know what to look for, what type you'll need, how it works, and definitely what to avoid. So this infographic gives you a great overview of what a city water filtration system actually consists of. So as you can see, the water comes from your city. It goes through some kind of pre-filtration, either to get rid of dirt, but typically to get rid of chlorine or chemicals from your water. Then it goes through a water softener if your water's hard. Then from there, it goes on to your whole household with the reverse osmosis drinking water system to give you super pure reverse osmosis drinking water on tap at your kitchen sink. And if you got a fridge with a water dispenser, it could be connected up to that too. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you, Gary, for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming and sharing some great tips and tricks on investing in cottage and cabin water filtration. So really the first step in dealing with your water filtration, whether it's your cottage or cabin or at your home, is knowing what concerns you and your family about your water. Once you know that, then the next step is having your water tested to find out what's actually in that water that's causing that grief for you. Now you can either have it tested at a local lab or you can send us a water sample, right? Yeah. And what do we do with that sample? So we test it here on site and with that we can give you a more accurate recommendation for exactly the system that would, would take care of would those take concerns. Care of your concerns yes. yeah absolutely and that test is totally free yeah fantastic and if you're not sure where to send that address just mail to water store 1004 king street midland ontario l4r 0b8 so let's talk about an automatic backwashing filter what do those things do they will get rid of the really big stuff so basically when you know these filter systems aren't doing the heavy lifting you're gonna have to go to a backwashable um, automatic filter so there's different kinds how they work is they're definitely plug and play they work automatically there's no filters to change which is great and the life expectancy is way much longer than if you're just changing a filter out of just a filter housing yeah so they look something like this here mm -hmm. now this is an iron filter but it basically yeah. looks like this it's just a little bit shorter it has three buttons on the controller here but as Heidi says the water just flows through it accumulates inside here and then it backwashes every five days mm -hmm and clean it out and then go from there. So of course the big benefit is you don't have to change filters, you don't have to uh, spin down, open up that spin down mm -hmm. filter, you don't have to do any of that kind of That's stuff. Really it just does it automatically and uh, these things last 10, 12, 15 years before they need any maintenance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's really a, a big convenience thing and when we run into situations where folks already have some filtration but they say, oh, we're constantly changing mm -hmm. the filters, this is the go-to, yeah. you know, that we recommend to, to go to that. So as Heidi says they're available in different configurations so for lake or well water when you have a lot of dirt you'd go with an automatic backwashing neck sand filter mm -hmm. um, if you're if you're on municipal water and uh, you don't want to be changing filters to get rid of that chlorine or those chloramines in your water, then you'd go with one of these and it'd be an automatic filter to get rid of those chemicals. Right. So again, depending on your situation mm -hmm. is whether or not uh, you'd want to go to uh, something like that. So some of the different types, Heidi, we talked about Nexan. Yeah, we talked about the Nexan and the other one is for chlorine. So that's the carbon one. And there's also a catalytic carbon, which is cl for chloramines. So what chloramines is, a lot of people don't know, it's chloramine with uh, pneumonia. So again, if you're looking for more information about those systems, I've got a great YouTube video that explains it all. And again, there's a link in the description down below. I uh, definitely encourage you to check it out if that's something that's uh, of concern uh, to you. And as I mentioned, you know, if you're on municipal water system and the, the bleach is driving your, or the chlorine is driving your family crazy, uh, people have sensitive skin, they're getting rashes and that kind of thing, I definitely encourage you to check out, again, another video that I have about that. So we've talked already a little bit about uh, when you use them, how they work, and uh, so can people maintain one of these themselves? Absolutely. Well, I mean, the first thing is you gotta make sure the time is set to the correct time. Just like, you know, you do in your microwave or your stove. So that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Other than that, um, there's really no maintenance uh, <laughs> at all. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of these systems. Yeah. There's no maintenance. So I've got a great uh, picture here of what these things look like, you know, so, um, but like, as you can see, they're very similar to this, just a little bit shorter tank. So eventually the day will come where you, the media will have to be replaced, but like I say, you're talking 12, 15, or even 20 years before that happens. Again, if you're not sure um, where to uh, get more information about this, you can go to our websites, 
WaterEStore.com in the US, WaterEStore.ca in Canada, and we offer free shipping and discount pricing. So Heidi, what's a water softener do? Well, you know, when you're complaining about your kettle and it's got that little white scale, all, you know, scaled up, that's hard water. And a lot of people don't like it. And so it will remove scaling, absolutely. It will soften your water. Um, it actually can reduce um, for you know how much shampoo you use. You actually cut it in half. Yeah, after you get a water softener, yeah. you use half as much shampoo, you use half as much body wash, mm -hmm. you use half as much soap for uh, uh, doing your laundry, half as much soap for uh, doing your dishes. Yeah. And that's one of the big advantages of a water softener. One of the ways that it kind of helps pay itself off is by reducing the soap content, especially if you have a family of four, five, six, or something like that with a bunch of kids, you do a lot of laundry, you know, yeah. and, and uh, oh, yeah. because of that. Yeah, so that's a huge advantage what's some of the other advantages of a water softener well it also removes some uh, iron uh, only up to about one one part per yeah million. one part per million but if you have low iron it's a perfect solution to do both things for you it's kind of uh, basically plug-and-play other than you add salt but other than that they are uh, they're great systems um, uh, a lot of people have them and uh, like I said, you won't have to worry about that yucky scaling anymore. Well, and it makes, makes all your water using appliances last longer, like your washing machine, um, your dishwasher, those kinds of things, because it reduces that scale buildup. But don't forget too about things like your uh, taps and your faucets and your shower heads and things like that. They all get scale buildup inside them. And uh, it's a lot of scale buildup. I have a great example here. This is a pipe that was uh, on a, a heating system here in a local apartment building. This is a two inch diameter pipe. And what happened after many years, the scale built up so much inside this pipe that it actually clogged the pipe totally. Yeah, no and water. No <laughs> water whatsoever. The plumber couldn't figure out why until he cut the pipe and this is what he found inside. So what happens is that scale buildup doesn't just coat the pipes once, doesn't coat all the surfaces mm -hmm. once. It creates layer after layer after layer. So the inside of the pipe actually gets smaller and smaller and mm -hmm. smaller. Now, one of the advantages of um, when you get a water softener, that scale buildup will start to go away. Now it's not gonna get rid of that, that major scale that we just <laughs> saw there, but if you have a few years worth of scale buildup, it will slowly start wearing that, that out and after a period of time it will definitely free things up. We've had a lot of stories about folks that have had um, washing machines and again cottages and cabins they put an old washing machine in there the hand me down from their house and then uh, and they found after a number of years it took forever to fill up that washing machine when they were doing their laundry but a few weeks and a few months after they got their water softener it took less and less time because it started to clean up the inside of that uh, water um, using appliance. So it kind of it prolongs your appliances too, right? Well, absolutely. Yeah, which and is again, great. protects your investment absolutely. so that you don't have to invest in that as often. Yeah. So, what types of water softeners are out there? Well, um, there is salt free, which we do keep hearing about. All we have heard about from our side, though, is people get them and they they don't work. <laughs> they yeah. don't actually soften the water correctly. Um, they break down quickly, so... Well, it's not that they actually break down. The problem is they just don't they work. They don't work, they don't soften. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's the problem. So what happens is we unfortunately end up replacing them with a water softener that actually softens the water, mm. which is what people were ultimately looking for in the first place. There's also the non-hydro uh, water softeners. It's kind of a tank with media in it that water passes through, mm -hmm. and as it passes through, it softens the water. Well, the only, pro only problem with those is they don't backwash, they don't clean themselves, they don't use sodium to regenerate that media. So what happens after a period of time, a few months, um, then that tank needs to be replaced. So you're constantly replacing the tank and that kind of thing. Now those have pretty much faded away. Uh, we don't see those too much anymore. Um, but like I say, they uh, they definitely uh, they they don't definitely don't work well. The traditional kind of water softener that uses salt, yeah, I know the salt's a pain, that kind of thing. But unfortunately, that's the only thing that actually works, and uh, and and that's important. Typical questions were asked about water softener. Can I install it myself? Yes, you can. Absolutely, it's uh, the same premise as this. You know, uh, plumb in and plumb out. Really, they're they're quite uh, straightforward. But if you want to have a plumber do the installation. Again, literally every plumber has installed a water softener yeah. one time or another, so you know they're well versed with uh, with doing it uh, that way. What else do we ask? People ask all the time, does it keep regenerating when I'm not home? Well, no, because if you're not using the water, it has no reason to regenerate. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. All the water softeners we handle are all metered water softeners, mm -hmm. so they measure how much water you use, and then they they regenerate based on that usage. Now they do have a default setting in them that if you haven't used up your capacity within 14 days 
they will automatically regenerate. Right. So what actually is a water softener? First of all, let's talk about what, what's hard water. So hard water is water that has calcium and uh, magnesium dissolved in, in the water. How does it get in there? Well, it absorbs it from the ground. So whenever your water source is well water, now whether it's a private well or whether it's a city that uses well water for their water, the water's hard because what happens is water is a natural solvent. It dissolves whatever it comes into contact with. Right. So it dissolves the minerals in the ground, the, lime, the limestone in the ground, and it makes the water hard. That's what it does. So what a water softener does, as the water passes through, the water softener has a media inside that attracts that um, calcium magnesium. It sticks to the media, removes it from your water, softens it, and then the water softener goes through a cleaning process. That's called the regeneration. Mm -hmm and it uses uh, salt and water, salt and water makes brine, and that's used to clean the media and then flushes it to the drain and it goes on from there. So that's the process that a water softener goes through. And if you're looking for more information about uh, water softeners, another video that explains how they work um, so that, so that uh, you know, it, it's important to know what you're investing in and how it works so that you can make a, a good decision. And you know, if you're not sure about the parts of a water softener, got this great slide here that shows you what the different parts are called and uh, it tells you a little bit more information uh, about uh, water softeners. So what are some investment considerations, Heidi, for water softeners? What should people be looking for when shopping for a water softener for their cottage or cabin? Well, I think, you know, one important thing is uh, a metered valve. So you make sure you get the, you know, correct size. You don't want to oversize a water softener. No, it needs to be sized yeah. correctly. Yeah, but you do need a metered valve so yeah. that it measures how much water, how much you, water use you use and then regenerates. So there's still some people out there selling non-metered water softeners where they're set up to regenerate every three or four or five days or something like that. They're super inefficient. I definitely don't suggest those. What else should people look for? Well, um, you know, again, uh, where is it made? So so when it's made in North America, it's readily easily to get parts, get manuals, get brochures, or sorry, you know, maintenance uh, tips and tricks, YouTube videos. To help you with troubleshooting, Absolutely. to help you understand how they work, you know. And, All the ins and outs, and um, you know, uh, non-proprietary is also always a big one because you want to make sure that you can easily get parts from wherever you are, whether you're near your cottage or whether you're on the way to cottage or going home and all of a sudden you realize, you know, you need a part, like it's just, it's so much easier when it's non-proprietary that you don't have to go to that one person to get it. So big box stores sell water softeners, is that a good place to get them? Um, I, no, because unfortunately most of them are proprietary. Uh, well, or, uh, no, no, they're not proprietary, but they are. They yeah. are made in China. So what happens is you'll never be able to get parts for them. You, you can't get any manuals for them. Yep. And if you have a problem or you need troubleshooting or you have difficulty installing It'd it. It would be hard to get. Yeah, yeah, you ask the guy at you know one of the big box stores, he's not going to know. So it, it's it's important that you get it from a reputable place so that they can help you with the installation and help you. The other problem with big box stores, water softeners, they don't last long. We've had a number of situations where, I mean, we do installations here in our local market and uh, we'll have a number of folks that'll call up from time to time. Well, you know, I, I want to get a water softener, but I bought it from uh, a big box store. Mm -hmm. Will you install it? We say, yeah, we'll install mm -hmm. it. But remember, if you have problems with this water softener and has nothing to do with the installation, we can't help you. And we've run into a number of, of times where this has happened. We install the water softener a month later, five weeks later, it's not working. They've called the 1-800 number. They can't get anywhere. Well, of course, the big box store says, well, bring it back. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not so easy to bring back a water softener right you have to disconnect it you have to drain it you have to put it in the trunk of your car you have to take it back to the um, store they'll give you another one now you're gonna pay somebody to reinstall it and cross your fingers that you're not gonna have the same problem again that's why I definitely don't recommend uh, big box store uh, water softeners well too like you said anyone. like we uh, we've had lots of people call recently and say you know I uh, I bought this water softener or you know anything and they they can't get any parts they can't get any one on the phone and they're begging us to help them and we are more than happy to help you out as best as we can and uh, most people but if we can't if, get parts if we can't get parts we can't get parts but um, you know, some of those people we've ended up selling new systems to because they're just so, you know, um, frustrated with, you know, going in a roundabout and they say, I just want my clean water. What are some ownership tips about having a water softener? Once we, we've bought, we need a water softener for our cottage or cabin. We've had the water tested. It's hard. We've 
invested in a water softener, we've had it installed or we've installed it ourselves, what are some ownership tips that you're going to notice with having a water softener? Well, first thing is you, you got to make sure you set the hardness correct, the iron correct, and the manganese correct for it to work for how hard your water is and right. what you have in it. You also have to make sure you keep uh, salt in it. So it's maybe a good idea to, Gary actually has a great video on types of salt. And how much? And how much salt to use. Salt is something that you need to make sure you always have in your water softener. And the golden rule is salt above water. Yeah, generally, like the water softener controls how much water it puts in. You control how much salt you put mm -hmm. in. So generally, you want to make sure that the salt level is higher than the water. Or if you have a pre-fill water softener, in other words, there's no water in there, then keep it about half full of salt. Got a, a great little chart that gives you some idea of the different hardness levels. What you'll experience with the different hardness levels of the water to help you determine whether it's, it's a water softener that you actually need to uh, for your family to uh, make sure that uh, you get rid of that uh, scale of buildup and uh, and make your home more pleasant for your family and again we've got some uh, great videos about how to size a water softener how to determine what size you need for your family i've got a um, playlist here that shows you how to install a water softener and go through the different steps if you choose to install it yourself by the way this is a, a tip for everyone whether you're on well water or lake water or city water or your home or whatever when you're away from your property shut your water off you've got a ball valve somewhere there shut it off it's super super cheap insurance if something were to split, a pipe were to split or something like that, you'd have a disaster that you yeah. would come home to. So I always encourage you to shut off the water, whether you've got a water softener there, a tannin filter, an mm -hmm. iron filter, whatever, shut it off. And then when you come back, turn it back on and then regenerate each piece of equipment individually. Wait till that regeneration finishes and then go to the next piece of equipment. It'll make the equipment last a lot longer and uh, you'll avoid the insurance folks and having to deal with all that. So what's a reverse osmosis drinking water system? Hey, what's it do for people? Well, it gives you reverse osmosis drinking water right in your own house. And what's the advantage of that? Well, you don't have to go and fill up those eight jugs every week at the, you know, water store. But why would you want reverse <laughs> osmosis drinking water? Because it just tastes so great. Yeah, <laughs> so reverse osmosis process lowers the mineral content by 90% in your water. So what that's doing is getting rid of the sodium and uh, a lot of the minerals in that in the water, but it also gets rid of things like pharmaceuticals and personal care right. products that we start to hear more about. It reduces things like sodium content and those other things uh, from the water. So it does a great job of cleaning up your water. Now it doesn't reduce it by 100%, it reduces it by 90%. So there's still some minerals definitely left in your water. What else does it remove from your water? A second uh, barrier against bacteria for drinking water. Yeah, absolutely. For wells or for lake water you know we're not you're not on a chlorinated water source mm -hmm. it uh, it gives you that um, but it also removes chemicals from your water yes it removes uh, chlorine chemicals um, also fluoride and chloramines however if you have chloramines it's a, a different filter yeah we yes. have a, a different um, reverse osmosis system that removes um, um, chloramines. that's specifically yeah. made for removing chloramines from your water it has better filters for removing the chloramines so one of the advantages, of course, of having a reverse osmosis system is it eliminates those single-use uh, water bottles and, of course, the, the, the environmental impact of uh, what happens to those uh, uh, water bottles. Usually when people are telling me they're bringing cases of water bottles to the cottage, those that's, well, you need the reverse osmosis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and does reverse osmosis remove tannins? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. It removes tannins. It sure does. So again, if you've got a, a tannins in your water, but you don't really want to go to the expense or the complexity mm -hmm. of going with a whole cottage or whole cabin tannin removal system, you can go with a, a reverse osmosis system. Just remove the tannins from that for one tap. Water. Yeah, for your drinking mm -hmm. water, and uh, and that will uh, really clean it up. So, are there different types of reverse osmosis systems? Yes. Yeah. There's a high efficiency and uh, there's a remineralization, which means it raises the pH, so it um, use, makes it like alkaline water. And there's many different stages, two to 10. So there's two stage, three stage, four stage, five stage. Yeah, <laughs> so, so the sweet spot is five stages. Yes. So usually when it gets higher than five stages, yeah, you go to a six stage where it has the remineralization stage. But when you see these ones out there for eight or nine stages and that kind of thing, it, it's just an excuse for them to charge you more money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it really doesn't do anything extra. The two stage and three stage ones, they just don't have enough filters 
to properly protect the membrane within the system. So it's going to cost you a whole lot more for maintenance for those ones. So uh, that's definitely something that you, you should consider. Now the system that uh, we recommend is the Hume um, Water Saver 75. That's the one I was just holding up there a minute ago, this one here. And uh, the big benefit of this one, of course, is that it's a high efficiency system. So there's very little water that goes to the drain, um, but it, uh, it also gives you high flow. So mm -hmm. it, it takes a very short period of time to, you can fill a 12 ounce glass in about five seconds. Um, so it, it gives you that high flow uh, capacity. So what are some common questions folks ask us about reverse osmosis systems? Um, can I install it to my fridge? Yeah, and that's right. And yes, you can. Um, it's very simple. You just need a little bit of extra tubing and uh, a tea. connector T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about it. And of course we have all that here. Um, if you order one and you would like it connected to your fridge, you can just write that in the notes and we can help you out with that. Um, also, can I install it myself? Yes, absolutely you can. It uh, does come out of the box just like that, so there, everything's all ready to go. The reverse osmosis does come with all the filters um, already inside the can, the housings and everything, so they're very easy to install, yes. Yeah, and they come pre-assembled. Yes. Again, if you're looking for information on how a reverse osmosis system actually works, I've got a great YouTube video in the description down below. I've got a link there that you can uh, definitely check that out. So we often hear of some misconceptions about reverse osmosis systems, and I did a whole video about that topic you know you get most of the minerals in your diet in fact 95% of the minerals that you need in your diet from your food not from your water mm -hmm. so um, so you know that's often a, a misconception but there's a whole pile more so I did a whole uh, live stream on that and again I got a, a link in the description down below I definitely encourage you to check that out if you're at all uh, skeptical about reverse osmosis water and uh, so again, what are some buying tips when getting a reverse osmosis uh, drinking water system for your cottage or cabin, Heidi? You know, uh, where is it made, obviously. Um, ours are made in North America. Um, all of our reverse osmosis use um, the UK brand John Guest Parts with their quick, the quick necks. Yeah, the fittings. They're fairly easy, to, very easy to use. So one of the big advantages of getting made in North America reverse osmosis systems, and again, we tried the Chinese ones 10, 12 years ago, is the build quality. You have to remember, this is water that's being contained in your home. There, there have been some concerns with those uh, made in China reverse osmosis drinking water systems cracking or even bursting and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we definitely recommend the higher quality of the made in North America system. Also, you want to make sure um, the tubing size is uh, 3 8 because um, if it's smaller than that, you would be quite surprised on how little of a flow you will get. So the tubing size definitely uh, matters and ours comes with 3 8 tubing. Yeah, so what Heidi's talking flow. about <laughs> is, yeah, so ours have the 3 8 inch tubing from the last uh, filter to the tank, to the faucet. So that gives you a lot more flow out of that 3 8 inch tubing than the smaller quarter inch mm -hmm. tubing that you find on those systems that you see on Amazon. And usually the big box stores, when they sell reverse osmosis systems, they usually don't last very long. Well, they don't last very long. And again, the parts. You can't find parts. You can't get customer service. You, uh, you good luck changing them. They, they won't help you there either. Yeah, and it's always a good idea to look for the high efficiency models because with the high efficiency reverse osmosis systems, again, there's a whole lot of waste water going to the drain and uh, waste. yeah and so because of that it's a definitely a much more efficient system so what are some ownership tips when you get a reverse osmosis system well the filters you have to change once a year yeah. um, so ours uh, our reverse osmosis is a five stage so that means you would change four filters the four stages uh, once a year the membrane only has to be changed every five to seven years yeah now talking about filters one thing we didn't mention when we were talking about uh, buyers guide yeah. it's important to get reverse osmosis system with non-proprietary filters. Yes. Because we see that happen so, so many often. times. Folks get them with the proprietary ones and then they find out that first of all, the proprietary ones are so expensive because mm -hmm. you can only get them from them. They can charge whatever they want. Yeah. But secondly, um, if the design changes in five or six years, you can't get them anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now you literally have to toss out the system and get yeah. a new system uh, because of that. Can you connect it to your fridge if it has an ice maker or uh, the water, you know, at the front. Absolutely, you can do both. And in the winter time, if you have a portable humidifier in your in your home, you can actually fill that up with reverse osmosis water. That's what we do in our house. And again, it prevents that scale buildup from being inside that and keeps the humidifier super clean so you don't have to keep cleaning it all the well, time. Well, even those air purifiers that everyone's using uh, lately, uh, you, the reverse osmosis water is great for that as well. You put water in air purifiers? Yeah, the little ones. 
Really? Yeah. yeah. The ones where you could put those oils in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. When it comes to uh, getting reverse osmosis uh, filters, a uh, question we're often asked is, which one do I need for my system? And uh, so again, I've got a great YouTube video that kind of breaks it all down and shows you what you can look for. But if you're not sure, you've watched the video, and you're still not sure what you need, send us a picture. Mm -hmm. Often from a picture, then uh, we can figure out for you um, which uh, filters you need. And as we mentioned earlier, I've got some great YouTube videos that show you exactly how to do the, the, the maintenance yourself, save you some money and uh, also some convenience. And uh, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. And if you're looking for more information about the water filtration system discussed in this video, I encourage you to go to our websites, either watereastore.com in the US, watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount prices. Click here for your next video on city water filtration and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments? Add them down below.